Welcome back. Uh, let us recap where what we did last time. Uh, last time we worked out the matrix elements of the coordinate operator q t q hat t in the path integral framework within the sandwich within the initial and the final state. And we also worked out the time ordered product of operators in the two states. Then uh, this is the expression that we arrived at the expression given in the green box. And the important thing I emphasized here was that uh, when we work out these expressions, when we work out the time ordered product, the path integral automatically assumes in terms of indexing in terms of time, the right hand side gives you a time ordered product. So, whether uh, if you have q i, q t i and q t j uh, uh, with t i greater than t j and uh, uh, q t j being placed uh, to the right then it is fine, but if q t j is placed to the left of t i uh, q t i and q t uh, j uh, occurs at a uh, earlier point in time then the integral would not be defined, because it assumes an increasing in, in grid um, indexing in terms of time. right? Then we worked out the operator product that is what I mentioned just now. Uh, we also worked out uh, that in the case of a quadratic velocity dependent Hamiltonian, uh, in the, the Gaussian integrals can be carried out explicitly and we arrive at the expression uh, and, and those Gaussian integrals can be incorporated uh, uh, in a normalization and therefore, we arrive at the expression uh, which is given in the green box in the configuration space. Uh, then we worked out also worked out the ground state expectation value of the time ordered product. Uh, the expression which is given in your slide we worked out an expression for this and what we found was the expression given in the green box here. So, this is what we did last time this was what we had uh, covered in uh, ground that we covered in the last uh, uh, lecture. Let us proceed from here. Uh, from here on uh, uh, a concept uh, called functional derivatives is going to make uh, um, repeated pre uh, presence and as a result of which because uh, many of the viewers may not be familiar with the concept, concept of functional derivative. What I have done is I have incorporated an appendix uh, in this PPT covering uh, functional derivatives and the viewers can go through the PPT uh, together with the lecture substance. So, let us start we work out the expression for the time ordered product using the concept of functional derivative. For this purpose what we do is we introduce two uh, inhomogeneous sources by adding the terms time dependent sources by adding the terms f t and h t to our Hamiltonian adjusting our Hamiltonian transforming our Hamiltonian in, in the form given in the green box here. So, these two uh, uh, and these two expressions f t and uh, h t represent inhomogeneous sources uh, classical sources they are and uh, to incorporate the impact of these sources we uh, uh, correct the or we adjust the Hamiltonian to the form given in the green box. Now, we take the functional derivative of the transition amplitude the transition amplitude is defined as in the earlier case as the dotting of the uh, final state with the initial state. Um, with in this case in the presence of the uh, sources the source terms are retained uh, in the Hamiltonian as you can see here as you can see in this expression the source terms are retained and we take the functional derivative of this expression with respect to f at time point t i. Now, uh, just uh, trace carefully or follow carefully the movement of this functional derivative across this path integral or the functional integral. Uh, first of all this functional integral attaches itself to the exponential term it goes inside the functional integral and attaches itself to the exponential term. Uh, when it operates on the exponential term within the functional integral the functional derivative takes out the exponential as it is in this form and then it attaches to the to the exponent of the exponential term uh, which is given in the green box at the bottom equation of your slide uh, red box at the bottom equation of your slide. Yes. So, now what happens is that functional derivative again goes through uh, the integral here 
because the integral is with respect to tau, the derivative is respect to f and therefore, it go, can be uh, commuted with the uh, with the integral and it goes inside the integral and attaches itself to f q. Now, uh, when this functional integral operates on f, f t q t, the f q is the abbreviated form of f t q t. So, uh, the q goes out, out of the functional integral and the uh, functional derivative and the functional derivative operating on f uh, t with respect to f t 1 gives the direct delta function at the point t 1 and that is given in the red box at the bottom of your slide. So, what we have here in this integral now in the last integral is uh, d tau as it is the functional derivative uh, um, with respect to f operating on uh, at point t 1 operating on f uh, captures the uh, or uh, returns the direct delta function uh, uh, at t 1 and the q passes through the derivative and is written as q of tau tau is the integration variable here. So, when we do this integral, when we do integ in this integral, we end up with getting q of t 1 and due to the property of the direct delta function, when uh, it, the integral is done over the direct delta function, we get q of t 1. So, the net result of all this movement of the functional derivative across the entire integral is to bring forth or capture uh, a factor of q t 1 into the functional or the path integral. We bring a factor of q t 1 into the path integral and please note this is nothing the, the expression here is nothing but nothing but the expression for the uh, the um, uh, the expected value uh, or the expression for the matrix element of q t 1 uh, in the um, uh, initial and final states we have been able to extract the matrix element uh, of the uh, of q t 1 with respect to the um, the initial and final states. And the process can be repeated the process can be repeated again and again to pull out as many factors of q as we want in the, uh, as many uh, uh, point functions as we want. For example, if you operate by q t 2 for uh, the functional derivative with respect to uh, f t 2 and then you operate again with respect to uh, f t 1 as shown in the red box here, uh, you end up with q t 1 and q t 2 in the, in the path integral which is nothing but the, but the time order product in the initial and final states. Similarly, by taking functional derivatives with respect to h, you can pull down terms of p into the path integral. So, the net result is to reiterate the net result is that by taking functional derivatives with respect to f and with respect to h, we can pull in pull in terms of q and p into the path integral that is the net fallout of the and then finally, after we have uh, pulled out as many factors of q and p as we desire, we can set f equal to h equal to 0 and recover the original Hamiltonian. So, the net scheme of things operates as follows introduce f and h as classical sources into the Hamiltonian by writing f t q t and uh, h t p t. Then take functional derivatives of the uh, path integral with respect to f t 1, you will get a factor of q t 1 into the path integral when the functional derivative operates on the exponential term. And similarly, if you take uh, a functional derivative with respect to h t 1, you get a factor of p t 1 uh, uh, into, the, um, into the path integral and that is how it operates. And then finally, what you do is put f equal to h equal to 0 and what you end up with is the original Hamiltonian and therefore, therefore the net result of all this process is given in this important slide. So, this is a very important slide. The left hand side as we as I showed is the functional derivative of f t 1, functional derivative of f t 2, functional derivative with respect to f t 1, functional derivative with respect to f t 2 of the transition amplitude incorporating therein f and h 
and then uh, when we do this we get the expression which is in the second equation. If I put h equal to 0 uh, and f equal to 0 in this expression I recover the original Hamiltonian and what I get here is simply the time ordered product of the relevant quantities. So, this is another approach another way in which one can recover the matrix elements of the, of the time ordered product uh, through application or repeated application of the functional derivatives on the transition amplitude after incorporating therein inhomogeneous source terms in the Hamiltonian and finally, putting the uh, inhomogeneous uh, source terms equal to 0. Now, we look at the ground state to ground state transition amplitude that is uh, uh, very important that is you see what happens is in certain systems when you give it uh, give the system a kick and impulse uh, 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 in some form uh, it is very interesting and uh, to know the intrinsic properties of the system by how the system reacts to the kick. Um, it, in particular, it is very interesting whether the impulse has generated any impact or has pu pulled the system out of the ground state or whether the system continues to remain in the ground state even after the impulse is acted on it. So, that is a very important uh, uh, property and attribute of the system which, uh, which is uh, is usually investigated in microscopic experiments, scattering experiments and so on and um, which uh, gives us a lot of information about what is uh, uh, the internal constitution of such microscopic systems. So, here what we are going to try to do is to work out the probabilities uh, or work out the amplitudes of the system remaining in the ground state after being initially in the ground state that is uh, despite there being a kick despite being uh, uh, exposed to an uh, external source a uh, classical source the system re remains in the ground state that is what we are going to investigate here. So, we describe the perturbation uh, as we did in the earlier case by exo exogenous terms, inhomogeneous terms F t and H t which we incorporate in the uh, um, in the Hamiltonian and we write the Hamiltonian in the form that we had written earlier F t is transformed uh, H q p is transformed as H q p minus F t q t minus H t p t. So, the, this is incorporating here the impact of the inhomogeneous sources F t and H t. Then uh, when uh, and this is again uh, what we have done just now uh, by taking functional derivatives with respect to F t 1, F t 2 and so on and with respect to H t 1, H t 2 and so on acting on the transition amplitude with F and H being therein and subsequently F and H put equal to 0, we are able to recover the time order product of these quantities. We pull down the various factors that are shown in the square bracket representing the time order product into the path integral and therefore, this represents the time order product. Right. Now, suppose uh, here you see so far what we have been focusing on is, is the case of position states. If you recall this and these, this is the initial state and this is the final state in the position space uh, in the uh, coordinate space. Uh, it is interesting because we are talking about ground states now uh, it is pertinent to investigate the or to examine the uh, various quantities in the energy space. Uh, for that we have to change the basis and, uh, and that is the next item that we are going to take up. So, we now look at transforming the problem to an energy eigenstate basis and then from there we try to recover or we try to isolate the ground state uh, amplitudes corresponding to various um, quantum operations. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier we are, we are considering here the ground state as the initial state and the final state we are examining the, uh, the situation where the impulse uh, does not uh, impact the or does not uh, result in the system moving from the ground state to a higher state the system remains in the ground state and we also exa uh, examine the impact uh, as the time t dash tends to minus infinity that is the initial time t dash tends to minus infinity and the final time t dash tends t double dash tends to 
plus infinity. So, now the object of our attention therefore, is the quantity that is given here in the equation that is given here. Um, if you look carefully of this equation, uh, the position state transition amplitude, the position state transition amplitude is multiplied by the respective uh, eigen uh, functions in the in the uh, energy space and integrated and the integration is done over all position space. Please note the integration is over all position space. You see the point here is that the ground state may not be localized, the ground state in energy may not be localized and therefore, we are integrating over the entire space in order uh, uh, to recover the complete ground state. Uh, uh, we are integrating over the entire position space as the initial state and the uh, as, as well as the final state. The you see the wave functions of the ground state uh, and they would not be localized in space uh, in coordinate space and therefore, we need to integrate over all the coordinate space in order to recover the complete wave functions. So, what we do is uh, uh, first step is that we assume that the ground state energy is equal to 0. If the ground state energy is not equal to 0, it can be made equal to 0 by a shifting of the Hamiltonian operator or introducing a constant into the Hamiltonian and that enables us to, to, uh, to work on the premise or on the assumption that E 0 is equal to 0, the energy is equal of the, the ground state energy is equal to 0. And of course, um, the Hamiltonian uh, the this n index the energy states now please note this these n this uh, number n uh, indexes the energy states rather than the position states so the hamiltonian operating on the i on its own eigen state generates the corresponding energy uh, energy eigen value uh, so this equation is as far of the for the action of the hamiltonian on its own eigen states now, we can write the uh, initial position space state or the initial coordinate space state uh, um, through a manipulation uh, by introducing a complete set of energy states by introducing a complete set of energy states which is in this step and this summation together with this step uh, and we can write it as this, pro this expression this is the wave function corresponding to, to the eigenvalue of energy n uh, at the point q dash uh, and in this n is the energy eigenstate and this is the effect of the Hamiltonian acting on or evolution operator acting on the energy eigenstate. Now, what happens? Let us see what happens. Well, our problem is to recover some of the ground state in this framework, the energy ground state in this framework that is our problem, that is our objective. So, let us see how we go about it. We instead of using the Hamiltonian H, we start use, uh, we introduce the Hamiltonian uh, 1 minus i epsilon into H, where epsilon is some small number, some small infinitesimal quantity but it is positive, it is positive, it is small. Now, what happens? Suppose, I use this transformed Hamiltonian and try to explore the evolution of the uh, initial state in uh, uh, initial state. Uh, what happens? What do I get? I can represent it, I can represent it in the energy basis in the following form. Uh, which is given in in the in the um, last equation of on this uh, slide uh, but please note this extra factor extra factor which originates due to this quantity epsilon in the hamiltonian this quantity epsilon coming into play into in the hamiltonian now uh, the the importance of this extra factor will soon be apparent but please keep that at the back of your mind and please note that this factor is real now, now what happens when this extra factor operates on a, uh, a an, uh, on a basis, a complete basis of energy eigenstates? That is the important part. When this whole thing operates on a complete basis of energy eigenstates, what we recover is this expression, and in this expression, this factor corresponds to the factor that I had mentioned earlier, and uh, this particular factor, as I mentioned, is the real 
and in the this this whole thing in fact can be expanded uh, can be written uh, as a term which involves the n equal to 0 term n dash equal to 0 term and the rest of the terms. In other words, the summation here is from n dash equal to 0 to infinity. I am writing the summation uh, as the term n dash equal to 0, I am segregating out this, this term for a purpose which will be known soon. I am segregating out this n dash equal to 0 term and I am writing the rest of the sum as n dash equal to 1 to infinity. Now, what happens is, if you substitute, if you take the limit t dash tending to minus infinity, if you uh, introduce the term t dash equal to minus infinity, then what you find is that because of this factor, this is a real factor and because of this factor, all the terms that are here, all the terms that are that are in the summation n dash equal to 1 to infinity, they will tend to 0. Each and every term will tend to 0 because of the existence of this factor. And this factor which does not contain this quantity, this first factor which does not contain this expression, this exponential damping uh, quantity, uh, that term will survive. So, let me reiterate what has happened is. We have replaced the Hamiltonian. We have replaced the Hamiltonian by uh, the Hamiltonian one minus i epsilon. Epsilon is a positive real quantity, uh, and the impact of this results in this expression coming into play. And this exp this expression, when it operates on a complete set of uh, uh, energy states, when the whole thing operates on a complete set of energy states, this gives me this particular expression with the summation and this this is again a real expression please note this and then this expression can be split up in this whole summation can be split up into two parts because remember E 0 is equal to 0. Recall that E 0 is equal to 0. So, when we put n dash equal to 0 this expression gives me 0, this expression gives me 0 and I am left with this and this, these two expressions I am left with which is psi 0 star uh, q dash into 0, this corresponds to n dash equal to 0, these two terms gives me 1 apiece. Now, the rest of the terms I write as it is. Now, you take the limit t tending t dash tending to minus infinity, when you take the limit t dash tending to minus infinity, this expression uh, uh, the real expression e e to the power exponential e n t dash with t dash tending to minus infinity, this will tend to 0. And as a result of it, each of these terms, each of the terms in the summation will tend to 0 and what we will recover is this expression. So, the net result is that every state except the ground state is multiplied by a vanishing exponential and we get only this expression, this is what remains. So, let us a uh, quick uh, now, what is the next step? How to now see where do where are we now? We are uh, having this expression with us. Uh, we are having this expression with us. A psi zero star at q dash uh, with um, operating or um, with the ground state zero. We want to recover the ground state. What we do is we multiply it by a function chi q dash and we integrate over q dash. We multiply it by a function chi q dash and we integrate over q dash. When you do this as you can see here in this in equation, uh, what you ha have left is integration over q dash with this expression. Now, chi q dash can be written as if you note this q dash into uh, dotted with chi and similarly this expression can be written as uh, psi, uh, psi 0 dotted with q dash. So, this whole expression if you look at it carefully what are we left with? We are left with psi 0 uh, and uh, dotted with chi and the ground state. Now, this expression is a constant, this expression is a constant and therefore, we get constant times the ground state and the constant can be absorbed in the normalization factor. So, that is that is how that is how by this process 
by this process first manipulating the Hamiltonian, secondly taking the limit t tending to infinity or t dash tending to infinity and then multiplying by an arbitrary function chi uh, q dash and then integrating over all of q, q dash, we are able to recover the ground state of our problem. So, uh, just to recap, uh, you start with the state q, uh, q dash in the coordinates uh, representation, coordinate space, operate on it with the Hamilton in, instead of h, we operate with the Hamilton is 1 minus i epsilon into h, epsilon is real positive or equivalently uh, operate by the exponential of this as the evolution operator and then take the limit t dash tending to minus infinity and you get the ground state, you get the ground state times the conjugate wave function of the ground state, ground state times ground state times the conjugate wave function of the ground state. This is the conjugate wave function of the ground state, this is the ground state. So, after doing these two operations operating on the, on the state q dash with this Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian uh, or the, uh, the operator corresponding to this Hamiltonian, you get the ground state multiplied by the wave function, conjugate wave function corresponding to the ground state at q dash. You multiply it with an arbitrary uh, function uh, chi q dash integrate over q dash and you are able to recover the ground state. Right. Of course, the condition and the, the arbitrary function that you are going to use must have this particular condition that it must not vanish when dotted with the ground state. Similarly, we can and this is this was for the initial state. We similarly, we can uh, in, uh, we can manipulate the final state q double dash t double dash absolutely on parallel lines, uh, we can manipulate the, uh, the final state q double dash t double dash and therefore, the net result is that if we use instead of h, if we use the Hamiltonian given by this expression 1 minus i epsilon into h, we recover the ground state with any reasonable boundary conditions uh, in the limit that the initial and final time uh, extend significant uh, tend to infinity. Therefore, putting all these pieces together, I can write the transition amplitude or the vacuum to vacuum transition amplitude in the presence of a um, sources f and h in the form which is given on your slide as the path integral uh, in the form given in your slide. Now, we can do a further analysis on this, we can do a perturbative solution, we can attempt a perturbative solution of this expression. Now, um, for this what we do is we segregate the Hamiltonian, we split up the Hamiltonian into H 0 and H 1, where H 0 is, is in a sense an exact Hamiltonian which can be solved ex, uh, explicitly for the eigenvalues and the eigenstates and H 1 is to be treated as a perturbation of H 0. Then what we uh, do is we start with this expression uh, in uh, replace there in uh, H equal to H 0 plus H 1 that is precisely what is done in the first equation nothing more absolutely nothing. And then instead of writing no H 1 is a function of P and Q. Now, instead of writing P and Q as we discussed in the first uh, 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 first K article that we discussed today that uh, P factors of P and Q can be recovered by the action of these functional derivatives with respect to f and h functional derivatives with respect to f and x acting on the path integral uh, enable us to recover or acting on the exponential term in the path integral enable us to recover factors of q and p respectively. Uh, that is precisely what is the underlying philosophy and therefore, in, in h 1 instead of uh, representing h 1 as a function of p and q, we represent h 1 as functions of these functional derivatives, because these functional derivatives when they act on uh, the remaining terms, uh, they put back terms or factors of p and q respectively and we these two give equivalent results. And for instance, when this uh, acts on this exponential which is given here, it will pull down q and if this acts on the exponential which is given here, 
it will pull down p right so that that having been done we can now you see now we can split up this uh, uh, and this path integral into two parts the one part now now the important part you see now the question was why did we introduce this functional derivatives this is a very very uh, ingenious strategy that will be followed throughout when we talk about quantum field theory also you see what has happened is now this is these functional derivatives are with respect to f and h the path integrals are with respect to p and q the path integration is with respect to p and q and therefore because this functional derivative or because h1 is now h1 is now not a function of p and q but it is a function of this functional derivatives and therefore you can take this uh, uh, outside the path integral that is the important part um, if you look at the two equations the difference between the two equations is precisely this that the terms relating to uh, h1 have been pulled out of the path integral uh, earlier it was not possible because h1 is a function of p and q now it is possible because h1 has now been converted to functions of uh, functional derivatives of f and h and the path integrals are with respect to p and q so we can take this term outside the uh, we can take this term outside the um, path integral and the rest remains as it is now now things become very simple things become simple because uh, if you look at this this expression is uh, is containing our h0 and by by presumption uh, we as we have assumed that h0 uh, uh, part of the hamiltonian is exactly solvable and therefore we should be able to solve the path integral contained in this ex expression the path integral expression should be solvable and uh, however this exponential which is the pre factor pre factor would have to be treated as a power series or a perturbation series and then solved thereafter in in some special cases uh, in some special cases we can simplify this and we can arrive at this expression for the uh, uh, transition amplitude uh, between vacuum states thank you we'll continue after the break